Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Shelby. I'm Shelby Wilson. Thank you for uh, taking some time out of your day to come here today. I really appreciate it, and you probably don't realise how much I appreciate it. So, um, thanks to Jose, who has every faith in me and has invited me to the conference talk, so I wanted just to get out there, and some loyal supporters I do have in the room. So, this is me. I normally don't blog or speak under my name. This is my logo. I'm the little black sheep. Um, and that is where normally you would find me. So this is a first for me today. I'm talking under my real name, Shelby Wilson, and I'm talking about the t a talk that's probably in some sort of development, but something that I've been witnessing. So I'm going to tell you about myself. It's very boring, as, I, as you can clearly see. If you don't know by now, I'm Welsh. I talk really fast. Thank you to the Welsh contingency. I speak really, really fast, so at any point that you do not understand me, please just say, shall we slow down, calm, uh, and I won't take, take offence. I love a good drink, as most of you will probably attest to, or has seen the state that I look in today. <laughs> I am actually a, a nerd. I love reading, I love blogging. Um, you'll often find me in some deep book somewhere, really enthralled something. That's one of my secret things about me. Blogging is my new thing, again, under my pseudonym. It was there. I was quite hefty, quite out in the, in the market, talking to lots of people. But as Shelby, I get kind of tense and emotional. And then I love communities. I have a massive passion around communities practice and what they can do, but that's a different talk for a different conference. I'll come back to that. So today, <laughs> as I talk to you, I'm going to tell you about my journey around the big consultancies and, and what I've seen and what I've not seen and sort of what that kind of looks like. So I'll set the scene. I'll give you my journey. We'll talk about the big C's, you know, the, uh, the B to the G's and the MCK's and the down little thingies that we can't talk about, right? So I'll talk around them, tell you their pros and their cons, and then I'll give you some tips out of my toolbox that I've had to have as I've gone into organisations and dealt with consultancies that have been in some of the jobs that I've been in. So, you know, guys, we're all people, we're all employed, contracting, permanent, whatever. We've all been in companies that hire one of the big four consultancies. And they come in and they're often brought in by quite senior executives. They do very short-term gains. They come in and they offer us a load of actors that come in and say, we can help you with your transformation. We are there. We can really help you deliver quite quickly. They land with that bloody beautiful book of 256 pages of absolute nonsense that covers every framework as agilist that we love. <laughs> and they put it in a pack and tell you to go off and run with, with that agility. Absolutely batshit crazy people when they give you that PowerPoint. It just doesn't work. And I'll come to talk to you about that in a bit. They also promote that silver bullet. And I back to Geordie's, I think it was Geordie's talk yesterday, or, or somebody yesterday that they spoke about, well, actually, it shouldn't be the silver bullet that, that they should promote. It should actually be that silver mirror that we should look into and look at us as good agilists going into that silver mirror. And our executives and the people that we speak to should really look into that, that silver mirror. And the best one, and I couldn't find the gif at the time, was they make they make they tell you they'll save you shit loads of money. Excuse the language. I apologise as a Welsh person. I swear uncontrollably without knowing it. But they promise kick kick you all the money. Now, in my journey, I've gone into these companies and these organisations, and often I end up being the agile cleaning service. So I come into an organisation. I pretty much follow some of the big transformations that happen in organisations. Oh. I follow my, you know, I, found, I think I found a bit of a market for myself in that I love a good transformation. And I'm often there speaking to these companies and these executives around what good agility looks like. And it isn't just one thing. It isn't just the values and principles that we all live by and love. It is a number of frameworks. But more importantly, it's about the people that we connect to in that, in that company. They have a problem. We are coaches. We are scrum masters. We are product owners. We are trying to solve something. We build our own repertoire of skills or whatever skills that we all have. So again, I'm one of these nerds that has to do every certification in the book because I can't, how can I not speak to my customer and not know about safe 
or about Kanban or lean or systems thinking or belonging or whatever that may, may be in the world. So I go in and then I go for my cleaning services. I need to get somebody to graphically design that. No worries, Marcus, whenever you're available, that would be really good for the new, lo <laughs> for the new logo, please. But I do, I go in and clean. And whilst I'm here to tell you that there's nothing wrong with hiring a consultancy firm, there isn't. They do come in and they do bring some wealth with them. They have a very niche market. They bring in extraordinary people that actually really sometimes know what they're talking about. They actually have some real good substance about them. They have good things about them. And then often or not, some of them are really crap. And that's when the cleaning services kick back in. Now, we've all been there. And I, you'll probably witness some of these in your own company and how they are. You'll probably see that they can value great exper expertise. The key things that they do is speak to the CEO. They've got traction there. They're often invited to steer codes. They can go into all the big executives and like us that can't go and do that, right? And we have to then find that niche to connect that dot. Now I'll talk about that when I show you a bit about my toolbox and how I do that connection afterwards. But this is what they do. They come in, it's quick traction. You often find that they land and then expand and they grow bigger and they cost you millions of pounds because they all do add-ons, right? Their model is around, this is what we can provide you. Here's the PowerPoint, because you know, I've got that in the bank already. Here's this beautiful PowerPoint. I can tell you that's amazing, but I'm not gonna tell you some of the key stuff. I'm gonna save that for later, because when it goes wrong, I can sell you that later in a better form. <laughs> and then I'm in the company then for a following two years. Happy days, that's their business model. But that's what they do. Now, if I could work the clicker, the pros to this is those consultancy firms, you know, they, they are disruptive. They come in with their ideas and because they have that traction with the CEOs and the executives, they're gonna be disruptive. So they're gonna tell you, your company is, culture is not, is poor. They're going to tell you that you need to do this new tool and I know a friend that can give you one. They're going to tell you that, you know, you need to do better ways of delivering your, your product to market, to customers, to whoever. So they're disruptive. They quite often are a cousin of, a friend of, a sister or a sibling of the CEO who somehow happened to be on the board of said consultancy. And I'm, I'll caveat that, please. That's just my experience of being in companies that I've worked in that have brought in CEOs and they brought in their own consultancy company and often or not they do have all of that great stuff that i said there that's a that's a that's a pro short-term value they will disrupt because they're disrupting you and because they're giving you a new tool set changing your culture telling you about agile ways of working they will have very quick wins inside their organization inside the organization that you are currently working in and that's great but they also come with a load of cons, right? And this is where, as Agile, this is, I think, where I'm, I'm trying to go on this journey to understand how, as an Agileist, and somebody that loves Agile, can go in and help and support and cultivate, and why executives, and I think I know why, but that's another talk, come along to that again, um, why executives do this. They, they, they have these biases that they continuously grow to work. They are stuck in their certain ways. And more often than not, their bosses are telling them, I want a quick win. Go do Agile. They Google it, or they know the CEO, or they sit on the board. They bring it in. Happy days. We land agility. But their crops grow f quicker than Japanese knotweed. I mean, if you've not seen knotweed, that's pretty fast. They land and try to expand, as I clearly said to you earlier on. They lose control of that transformation. That's really key here, guys, because there's nothing worse than being in your organization and losing your way with your agility transformation and the promise that they give you when they come in. It can damage the good people that you have on the ground. I've been in companies where people have like been sold agility by these companies and then go and Google something really good or read a blog by somebody and then realize for themselves that that's not agile and they eventually get upset, the culture goes down, and they eventually want to leave uh, the business. 
which is really sad for your organisation. So as good agilists, we want to make sure we cultivate those people and give them that good agility. They have an often mis misalignment with a lot of stuff. I just put cu culture and consultancy approach as a bullet point, but actually there's so much stuff that they have a misalignment with. And I generally think I'm on a one world woman mission to speak to great people in the world of agile to say, do you know what? We love what we do. We love why, why are we in agile? Why? Why is there this misalignment? Why is that culture? Why is we letting the consultancy have these approaches? And I think I'm about going in and speaking to people and understanding who they are. So they also have short term gains. And I told you this. And they also lose the control of the transformation once they're embedded. And do you know why they lose control? It's because nine times out of 10, that consultancy business model is about bums on seats and making money and nothing else. And so therefore, that transformation expands beyond all reach. And people, again, happy. So whilst they do some really great stuff, I'm here to tell you they do some really bad stuff. That doesn't mean you shouldn't hire them. There's the reason they are in the world and in the market. But understand who they are and what they can do to you. Now, so what can be done about it? So again, on my mission and my little rants and speaking to my great friends in the world of agility, I'm on a bit of a mission to kind of say, well, OK, how do I get you as executives or good agilists or scrum masters or product owners in your organisation, understanding that the journey isn't quick or easy, understanding there's some work to do, that you, you, know, you need time. I think somebody yesterday said they need, the one thing they told their executives was they needed patience. Geez, you need that in buckets. You need that in spade loads. And that's what, you know, as good agilists, we should be saying to the people that we communicate with, we need time, we need patience. We need to build those capabilities inside those organisations. Again, I'm on a bit of a mission because I love communities of practice to set up great community practice of scrum masters, of testers, of devs, give them the skills, coach them, give them basic good training, send them on courses, send them to bloody conferences because you learn from one another. God. I'm a baby in this world. There's so many big peers in this room and I love them to death. But I learn from them on a constant basis and then that enriches me to enable me to go back to my organisation to speak to them what good agile looks like, what good practices are, what good culture there is, what good training is out there. Foster that good community of learning, understand, continuously adapt, inspect. I'm lucky that I've got Chris Stone here. He's a retrospective guy, does lots of good improvement stuff but we fail with that because we don't use retrospectives to continuously inspect and adapt and we don't use them to say we have problems inside our organization and then we don't act on those actions that come out of them it's almost like i've done a retrospective i told you something's bad happy days i'm just going to go back into my sprint and go back sprint planning and it's all good we should be actioning them and as my challenge to you all as good agile people Please act upon your continuous improvement. It will make your organisation A, stabler, and you'll learn a lot more stuff. Encourage your employees. Now, the reason I put that one in there is because I should take some of my own advice. I don't encourage myself to speak. This is right out of my comfort zone. And those that know me know very well that I had a bit of a nervous breakdown yesterday. So. I, sh I try to encourage new people. I try to tell them, go to the world, be part of it. God, I should take my own lessons. I tell them to be encouraged, to, to do what they need to do. Embrace it, take the risks. I want you to fail, but I want you to fail well. And then I want you to adapt and experiment and keep that going and keep on fostering it inside your organisation and challenge your leaders when they say, Oh, you're failing. We're not delivering. Well, yeah, we're failing because I don't do enough training. I'm not allowed to innovate. There's a number of reasons. So encourage it. My last one again, I've had to get community practice. I'm like dropping community practice into everything. Build those great community practice because they are really going to be the people and the things that really hold up your organisation. Give them that right skill set. Teach them well. Get them to 
almost run their own in-house conference. You know, I've just been to a conference today. I'm going to go back to my organisation. I'll do some nice um, Marcus drawings to say that I've been to this conference and be my information radiator back into my organisation. Use the tools that we have to get into the organisation. Great agility. Okay. Any questions at this point before I move on? Hi. I feel like I'm exercising. You said that the journey won't be quick or easy. Um, if it's slow, how do you provide feedback to the people paying you? How do you provide feedback? Oh, typical coach style. <laughs> how do you provide feedback to your... Um... I, I give them a regular cadence of some sort of review, right? So, and, okay. uh, and... and what's that look like? It's a good question. It's uh, it, it, well, I guess I guess you you've you've got to show them I guess milestones and and then and then start. Oh, that's a whole co another conversation. But it is information, right? Yeah. We are built off information. We have a unique skill set. We are all skilled in our perfect trade. My my niche skill set happens to be around communities of practice. And so when I go into an organisation, not only do I do coaching. I do community practice, set them up, but then provide the data because the data doesn't lie. Give them to them in any form they want. That's why it's long, because the other thing is your executive or the people that you're working with, they're not going to understand the data that you're trying to present to them from an agile perspective. That's why it's drawn out. And often or not, those executives have their own biases. They want their own things. They'll often say, we've always done this, so we should always do it. I put JIRA in, I still want that like RAG status report. But keep on failing at it, keep providing that data, keep being an information portal, keep pushing it out, get the narrative out there that when you embed good agility practices and you are in your organisation, then agility will succeed and help you get things to market quicker. God, I wrote that. Like, amazing. So, Given all my current journey and everything that I, I, I am doing, I have built up a lovely little tool set that I use for myself. I caveat this, guys. This does not need to be yours. I think you all need to get your own. But this is just something that I've been trying to master and have great conversations with people like Jose and Dan Vacat and loads of different people that I have conversations with around my toolbox and how I can help my organisations become better in their agile transformation and the people that are adopting agility. So this is like I did some PowerPoint and as an agile list, I'm absolutely crap at writing PowerPoints. So the, now this is the magic technical bit that I thought I was really clever at. <laughs> Speech. Woo! So I use this as a bit of a mantra to everybody. Don't criticize the consultancies that come into your organization. Don't do it. That executive who's hired them or on the board have a kin with this company. They love this company. This company has told them that the golden goose is going to lay that egg and everything is going to be great. Don't criticise them. It makes you look like the idiot, it, not them. What you want to do, I think I had a lovely saying somebody sent to me yesterday, trust, you may not like the people you work with, but always work with the people that you may trust. And that kind of resonated with me to this because there's some great people in consultancies that I know work in consultancies that I have great friendships with. I will never criticise them because then that makes me look, I don't know, sad whatever word I think I want to use about myself when I criticise them. I just think it's a bit of a sour taste. So I never criticise the organisations that I go into. No. This is my most absolute favourite uh, phase that phrase I use ever in the organization for those that have worked with me will know I kind of repeat this on a bit of a loop I don't understand it is your biggest sentence you can ever use when speaking to a non agile person two things are going to happen if they are that type of I've bought a tech board consultancy firm in I'm this I'm really senior as soon as you say that sentence, they're going to go run away because they're command and control. However, there's about 70% of people that will then literally open up like a chocolate teapot. 
they will literally explode and tell you why they've done something. And do you know what, guys? That is your easiest way in as an Agilist to start having great conversations, to start dropping in. You should go here, you should go read, you should go see, you, sh you should go do whatever it is to get your knowledge of agility higher. I don't understand. It is a challenge. Please go use it in your organisation and have some fun with it. I give you that for free. I might charge you because I'm a consultant, so you know I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Show evidence of your delivery. Back to the point, information. Information is key. Keep pushing it out. I can clearly go into an organisation, as I have just done, and I can clearly say things like, I got 19 people promoted in my last job. I saved them £4.6 million. Pound. I rolled, we rolled out this in 20 sprints. They're my evidence. So I've got a toolbox of evidence that I can roll out when I am working with people to say, this is what success looks like. This is if you embed it right and correctly. This is what good agility will look like. Engage and communicate. It's a bit of a theme. Because I just think, as good agilists, we all have a voice. We can all say something really good into our own organisations that we sit in. And then last but not least, be a coach, be a mentor, be a teacher, reach out to somebody that's just starting that journey, help foster, collaborate, great agility inside your organisation. Any questions? Oh, and these are all real. So these are not my pseudonym. These are actually me. So that's where you can find me. And I will open up the floor for any questions if there is any. Thank you.